to be able to retrieve that information and send to the calling node, such as the MSC or the CSCF. Okay. Now, another important node is the BGCF. Okay. The BGCF is the breakout gateway control function, which exists in the CSCF. Okay. So, as you can see, the CSCF has within it the BGCF. What is this BG, um, BGCF? The BGCF is the node which determines whether it is going to talk to another IMS network or another um, CS network. Okay, so in the CSCF network, right, if it wants to break out into another network, right, the node which determines which node to be able to communicate to, whether it is communicating to um, as another SIP network or is communicating um, to another um, CS core network, the node which determines which um, switch, which determines where it should go, is the BGCF. Right. In the IMS network, is an important node called the media resource function, which is broken down into two parts the media resource function control and then the media resource function processor. Okay, so what this node does is to be able to play the announcement. So in the CS call network, the node which implements this functionality is the media gateway. As I told you, the media gateway is what plays the announcements in the network. The caller cannot be reached and other things. In the IMS network, the, net, the node that handles the announcement parts or the mixing of media for conferencing is the um, MRP, um, the MRF, which is broken down into two aspects. That's the, the FC, that's the um, control part and then also the processing part. Then the DNS is what we talked about extensively in the packet call. So here we find the DNS also being existent. In the DNS, we've um, here it also um, changes alphanumeric names to the IP addresses to be able to know which I am um, ICSCF or um, SCSCF to talk to or which node to talk to. But then it also has a much deeper. Um, functionality to be able to convert these URIs or these um, names, okay, to alphanumeric names to phone numbers or from phone numbers to um, what do you call it, the alphanumeric name. Let me give an example. If let's say an IMS subscriber is calling somebody who is on the CS call network, right, the, the note which does the conversion or which handles the conversion from um, the URI because in the um, IMS or the voice over IP network, we are not using phone numbers. We are using addresses. We are using addresses or URIs to make the calls. But in a case whereby you are breaking out to an external network, right? It means that you will need the B number, num um, the B number in order to terminate the call. How we are able to map these URIs to the B number or to the phone number or to the numbers that are based on the E164 number um, format, such as phone numbers, such as um, the MSISDNs, right? The note that handles that aspect is also part of the DNS, which is called the ENOM, all right? So the ENOM stands for what? Telephone number mapping telephone number mapping. So the enum converts the E164 numbers into URI, which could be used in the IP network. The enum DNS queries are normally initiated by the CSF only. Why? Because the CSF is the node which will determine whether I am breaking out into the, um, the SEP network or into the CS core network. If I'm breaking out into the CS core network, then I will need the um, MSISDN or I will need the E64 number format to be able to break out into that um, plane. But if I'm calling within a SIP to SIP or a SIP network to a SIP network or an IMS network to another IMS network, all I need is a URI or an address to be able to make that kind of call. Okay, so that's basically what 
the um, the DNS or the enum is used for. Then we have what we call the BGF. Okay, so the BGF can be configured as a CBGF working in the UNI interactions or an IBGF working in the NNI interaction. So what does it really, what, what do we mean by BGF um, on UNI and in NNI and all those things? So the BGF controls the media flow. That is the RTP, RTCP, MSRP um, protocol or the media flow of the calls in the IMS. Both the C and I BGF provides policy on the uh, on a per media stream based on the SDP information in the signaling. NAPT traversal functional functions for the media packets only for C BGF. NAP TPT traversal functionality for media packets only. That's for the C, also for the CBGF. And then the dynamic pinhole firewalling also pass media streams corresponding to observed signaling rates and then SDP parameters. So let me just, let me read this one before. The recommendation is to use the BGF implemented by the smart edge. That's the SEBGF. The SEBGF also impl implements the access transfer gateway um, a G A T G F. Okay, so let me go back to. So we have this C, the BGF, which was explained, right? We have two types. We have the one that exists on the UNI plane. The, the UNI is the part that connects to the access network. Then we have the part which also connects to the um, NNI. Okay, now if I want to communicate to the um, the SIP network, okay, another SIP network, the node that I require, the node I, I need to be able to handle the media part of the core towards the SIP aspect is the IBGF, okay, the IBGF or the IB. IB GW. So the media aspect to be able to make the call from SIP to SIP. If it's a SIP to SIP call, I need what we call the IBGF. SIP to SIP call, that is network to network call, I need what we call the IBGF. Now, if I want to be able to implement it towards the access part of the network, what I need, need is the CBGF. So the CBGF is the, the, the aspect of um, handling the media streaming or the media call towards the UNI. That is towards the access part of the network or towards the user, the user of the network. Okay, so that is what the um, the BGF is. Then we have um, the PSTN and then the CS. And gateway. So, in effect, if I want to, if I'm a BGCF and I want to be able to connect to other um, CS call nodes, right? What I'll require is the MGCF and MGCF and then the MGW. Okay. So, if I want to be able to connect to another CS call network, as we can see from here, the main detailed architecture, if I'm a CSCF, and I want to break out into a CS core network. What I require is the MGCF, right? The MGCF is the part which controls um, the, 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 the part which controls the call towards the CS core network. And then it also controls the media gateway in order to set up the resources for the call. So that is what the um, M. When, when we talk about the CS or the PSTN gateways, one of the gateways is the MGCF and then the media gateway. The IBCF implements the SIP. I've already mentioned it, that when I was talking about the breakout um, gateway control function. Okay, so if I want to connect to another um, network, right? Um, I want to be able to connect to another SIP network. The node that implements the 
the NNI functionality to be able to connect to the other SEP network is the IBCF. So that is what the IBCF is. Then now we want to talk about the application um, service. OK, so the MTAS product implements the following um, service. We have the multimedia telephony application server, the MMTEL. We have the um, IMS service centralization and continuity application server. That's the SCCAS. Then we have the scheduled conference application server, which handles the conferencing and uh, in the voice over IP network. OK, so these are the different aspects of the MTAS in the um, IMS network, which which handles the the services that we want to implement in a net network such as gaming so if i want to implement gaming in my network i don't want my subscribers to go over the internet to to you know play games you know um, i can implement my own um gaming network in the ims network whereby subscribers can connect and play games if i don't want subscribers to be able to if I don't want subscribers to do WhatsApp calls, but to be able to have their own voice over IP communication between themselves, I can implement that functionality using the MMTEL. OK, so the MTAS is the, at the application level, which implements the different services that we want to be able to achieve in the IMS network. That is what makes the IMS network the IMS network, because it is what differentiates it from the Pack IP network, which only act as a transport layer, just sending in packets and sending packets in. That's it. But then here, if you want to differentiate the packets, um, you want to differentiate services whereby you have different services in the same network, whereby subscribers don't have to go out of the network, then you will need what we call the MTAS. Finally, we would like to talk about the um, different identifiers or identity in the IMS network. We have what we call the IMPU, that's the IMS Public User Identifier, which is a unique identifier and routable address that a user can be reached on, used in communicating with others. Then we have the IMPI, which is the IMS Private User Identity, which is a unique identity which may be used within the home network to identify the subscribers. So, one is within so let's say for example within mtn network they want to implement ims what they will require is just the impi identity okay these are the different uris that can exist in the ims network the next one is the public whereby i would want to communicate with other external networks okay so that is when I use the IMPU. And then the last one is related to services. That's a PSI, that's a public service identity. That's the unique identity and routable address that a service can be reached on. So here we are talking about connecting to other um, services such as the application service, um, the gaming service, the voice over IP service, the, um, I mean, the different aspects of IMS services that we'd want to implement. We also have they are, we also have this um, them giving these um, public service identifiers. So these are the three main um, identifiers that exist on the um, IMS network. Okay, so on this note, um, I'll bring the um, curtains down for the core network. So in summary, the core network comprises of three different networks. We have the we have the three different networks. Um, we have the CS network, which is a network which requires dedicated resources in order for calls to be set up. We have the packet call network, which requires a, a shared network for best kinds of communication such as internet ip traffic um because sometimes you'll be sending voice 
um, you'll be sending packets, right? At a certain point of the transmission, you find out the packet transmissions are very high. At certain points of the transmission, you find out the packet transmissions are very low. So because of that um, behavior of the packet call network, that is why we have the idea of sharing the network. Because at that point in time, you would have you you would need some res high some num um, resources to be able to handle your high packets at some point in time to you will need just low resources to be able to handle the packets um, transmission and then reception of of packets in the cs aspect which i've already mentioned because the the the, the requirements are constant like if i'm making a call i require maybe 64 kilobits of resources to be able to make the call I, if you give me less than that i wouldn't be able to make the call because a call is constant the call doesn't go up and come. you require dedicated resources to be able to you know handle the call then the last aspect of the call network is the ims network the ims network is just an introduction of services into the packet domain whereby you do not want your um, subscribers to go out into the um, the internet for those services. So here we talked about the um, gaming services. We talked about streaming services such as Net Netflix. Um, we've talked about um, voice over IP services such as the Skype, the Teams. If you do not want your subscribers to go all over the internet for that, you can implement these services and your subscribers can be able to connect. Now the network that enables that kind of service um, differentiation is the IMS network. So these are the different aspects of the core network. Um, on this note, I would like to say um, thank you for you know you know joining me for the the core part of the training. The training we'll be doing the other training after the break. After twelve, um, we'll be doing the IN and then we'll move on to the run and then to the IP and then the transmission aspects of the, 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 the telecom network. Um, at this moment, I think we have about um, nine minutes more to 12. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask. If anything was missing you, you found out maybe you didn't understand something properly and you want further explanation, Please, you can go ahead and ask. Hello. Hello. Are we on the call or we have gone to bed? Let's interact. Are we all following the course? Is everyone okay? Do you have any questions? Yeah, 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 fine. Yeah, right. Okay. When are we getting the recording? <laughs> you get it um, after the training, after we are done with the training. But do you, is there any aspect of the, what we've discussed, is there anything that you think that um, you didn't understand properly? You can, you can, you can let me know because we have some time before the, the lunch break, the one hour lunch break. Because I know the IMS is a bit doubting, like it's, has a lot of nodes with a lot of functionalities, but I think when you give it some time, you'll be, you'll be able to appreciate what it is, you know. So if there is anything on the IMS part that you think you it wasn't very clear, uh, you can just give me a buzz. Just let me know. Okay, so. If you guys are not saying anything, then I would, I would ask some questions. Okay, um, Derek. Yeah. 
Yeah, so in the IMS network, can you tell me the node which determines whether it, uh, which, uh, which determines the network it has to connect to? And whether it's connecting to a SIP network or to another CS core network, what is the node which implements this functionality? Question for all people or? No, um, to Derek. Oh, okay. Derek? Yeah. Can you tell me the node which implements the um, which implements the part of the IMS which determines whether it talks to a CS core network or an I another IMS or SIP network? Which node is that? If you don't know, is you can ISCS be honest. Is it the ISCS yes, No. No. Okay. Any, anyone can answer. Anyone with the answer? Yes, yes, yes. The what? BGF, IBGF. Yes, IBGF. IBGF is towards the SIP. It's purely for the SIP. But then this this node is a determiner. It's like when the call is going towards the SIP side, it will determine when it is going towards the CS call side is what determines. It starts with B. BGF. B. BGF. B. Um, the breakaway control um, function. That's the BGCF. BGF. No, no. That's the BGCF. BGCF. The CBGF is towards the UNI, right? If I want to be able to, um, a, a proxy that wants to be able to connect to another um, access network, yes, the fixed network, then I need the CBGF. But then in the CSCF, there's a node called the, this, um, the breakout gateway control functions. That's the BGCF. So what I'm asking for right now is the BGCF. The BGCF is what determines whether I will want to talk to another SIP network or another um, CS core network. Okay. Zola, is it is it clear? Is it clear now? Yeah, yeah, it's clear. It's clear. Okay. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Um, Another thing, um, who can tell me what a stateful proxy is and then what a stateless proxy is and give me examples? Well, uh, um, a stateless proxy does not keep a record. Very right. Cool. Doesn't keep a subscriber record, yes. Yes. Subscriber location and then the record. Yes, very good. And then the stateful and proxy. Yeah, that one will keep records of the subscriber. Okay, good. Can you give me examples mm -hmm. of both? Okay, for the stateless proxy, we have the UDR. And then for the stateful, the provisioning gateway. No, no. Okay, oh, the stateful shit. proxies are CSCFs. Okay, so here we are talking about CSCFs. We have the I, okay. we have the P, and then we have the SCSCF. An example of the stateful proxies are the PCSCF and then the SCSCF. So these two, okay. as you said, keep record of the subscriber's location and then the subscriber information. The stateless proxy do not keep record. You understand? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So here we are talking about the the CSCFs. They are all proxies, but then some keep records, others don't keep records. So you are right. You are right. Now, what? One last question before I uh, I, I end the session. What are the four main nodes in the basic 
um, IMS architecture, the four main nodes in the basic IMS architecture. I see, yes, 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 yes. Uh huh. Uh, and task and uh, S C S C S. Okay. Um, MTAS is an application server, so we will not consider that. You missed HSS. Ah, so we yes, have yes, HSS. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. HSS. Yes. Mm -hmm. SCSS, <laughs> yeah. PCSS, so we have HSS, HSS, and yes. uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Guys, um, I like that. Hello, Max. Yes, yes, tell me. It's raining here. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. All right. So, you guys can go for break. I I'll be waiting for you guys. When you come back, then we continue. We'll be doing the iron. So, the next training you guys will be having is iron. Then we do the access, then we do the IP and then the transmission. Okay. Oh. 